Here we're going to look at the relative fair value method or proportional method for convertible debt or convertible bonds in this example here. And the first example we're going to do is where we have these convertible bonds and we swap them into common stock. And then the second example would be where we've uh, retired these uh, convertible bonds through a cash purchase. But before we do that, we're going to have to establish our uh, uh, bond value here as a liability and as a uh, equity amount here and we have to proportion these amounts and the uh, liability or the debt portion will be based on a similar bond without the conversion rights and then the equity portion would be the fair value or the conversion rights of those bonds so we're going to first go through and show how to assign those uh, values here and proportion them between uh, the debt and equity amounts based on the uh, bonds par value or it could be based on uh, whatever the um, issue price is here if it's above or below that uh, par value, then we would assign our percentages based on that. Okay, let's look at the relative fair value method or the proportional method. So in this case, we have an assigned value here. We have a known value for the debt portion or those uh, convertible bonds in this case. And we also know what the equity value is of the, uh, in this case, the conversion rights. And let's just go down here and look at them. So the known, uh, we've used the similar bond without a uh, conversion feature, and we determined that that bond would be worth $96,150. And then that fair value of the conversion rights, we know that they're worth $2,900. That's their market value here. So let's go up here and figure out how we um, would allocate the, the amounts between the uh, debt portion and the equity portion. So we take these known amounts here, uh, the present value of those bonds here to $96,150 without the conversion rights, and then we take the fair value of those conversion rights of $2,900 total them. We come up with $99,050 here. So to figure out a relative percentage between the um, these known amounts here of the debt and equity. We divide, in this case, the 96,150 by the 99,050 uh, total amount here to come up with a 97% assigned to the uh, debt portion of those convertible bonds. And then for the uh, equity portion here, those conversion rights, we would divide the 2,900 by the total amount here of 99,050 and we'd come up with 3%. So we got a total here of 100% assigned between the debt and equity portions. So now to uh, assign our uh, equity, our debt and equity portions up here, uh, based on the, in this case, the $100,000 par value, we would take those relative percentages. In this case, for the uh, liability or the uh, convertible debt here, we take the 97% that we assign times the $100,000 bond par value, and we come up with 97,000 here. And then for the equity portion, we take that relative percentage of 3% times that uh, bond par value here of 100,000, and we come up with $3,000. So here we allocated the debt portion and the equity portion based on a relative percentage here of these known amounts that we uh, uh, started with here, and we uh, allocated those to these bond par value or what we use, whatever the issue price on that bond would be. So this is how we use the, uh, would calculate the relative fair market value uh, based on the proportion or the proportional uh, method here for allocating this debt and equity portion on this convertible debt. And that would be at the issuance of this bond here. Okay, for our first example, our bondholders are going to swap the bonds for common stock. So what first thing we have to do here is we have to determine the carrying value of those bonds. So I've that, done that down here. So we would reduce those bonds payable amount or debit it here for $98,652. So we would be eliminating those bonds here. And then we'd also have to uh, get, uh, close out this surplus account here, those conversion rights account here. So we'd uh, debit that for $3,000. So then the balance amount here would be through the common stock. That's the common stock that we issued here for those convertible bonds. And that is based on the uh, bonds carrying value plus those conversion rights, or this is just a uh, debit or credit balance here to these two debit amounts here in the um, bonds payable 
and the conversion rights account. So that common stock here is $101,652. Okay, let's look at the example here where we retire these bonds through a cash purchase. That is, we pay cash to our bondholders in return for these bonds, and there's no common stock involved. So the first thing we have to do is we have to de determine the carrying value of these bonds. So we would reduce or debit our uh, bonds payable by that carrying value amount. And then we'd also have to close out this surplus or this conversion rights here because they no longer exist. So then we have to go up here and uh, look at our cash account here. And this is the amount of cash that we paid to our bondholders for the return of those bonds. And in this case, it's $107,000. And then we go down here and look at our expense account. And that is based on, uh, the, uh, th this would be our debt retirement cost of those bonds. And that's based on the bond's fair value minus the bond carrying value. So what we have to do here is we have to determine the fair value or the market value of those bonds at that retirement date. So the difference between that fair value and the carrying value of the bonds would be the expense that we recognize on our income statement for that debt retirement. And then we go up here and this retained earnings, that would be a balancing account here. And in this case, we reduced it by $4,750. Now that uh, balance here would be the debit to this retained earnings plus this debit to the expense, the debit here to the uh, surplus account and to this debit here to the bonds payable. That has to balance with the credit amount here of the cash that we paid of $107,000. Okay, in summary here, when you're doing these bond conversions and bond retirements, you have to be able to determine the carrying value at the, of the bond at the time of the conversion or retirement, and also the fair value of the bond here. And that's, this fair value is needed to determine the re debt retirement expense. And then you have to also be uh, using a method that's consistent when you first recorded or issued that bond. So if in this case we use the ver fair value or the proportional method so we have to carry that through all our uh, balance sheet entries here and calculations. So you can go through this video here. I have all these accounts laid out here in T account form where I have them lined up here as the assets, liabilities, and stockholders equity on the balance sheet and also the income statement or net income accounts.